funny story. I, uh, I bought the, uh, was it Mill Creek? Did the release of Gamera, the Legacy Collection, all 11 movies. I got that, but I also paired it up with Jim Cotta. Yeah. Bought it on Amazon at the same time. <laughs> GG, go with it. It sucks because they don't have Gamera the Brave on the release. I was like, fuck. Dude, that the DVD and Blu-ray of, of Gamera the Brave is ridiculously priced. I, it's I, because I, it's out of the print right now. And it's, it's really not that good of a movie. I figured, fuck it. Just fuck it. We'll mention it, but it's just like... Toto? <laughs> really? Toto? Yeah, exactly. Stupid shit. Oh man. I don't think we're in Tokyo anymore. <laughs> there can be only one. They're here. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape. And this is where we talk about cinema and we royale whenever we can. Uh, we're in a little light today for this episode because we're this is a little obscure episode I decided to do in honor of Jurassic World being released this weekend. Um, let me introduce you to the one co-host that I do have and the guest I'll mention later on. Uh, first up, we've got James Sullivan, also known as Jaime Dude. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by... I curse the day Sandy Frank was born. <laughs> I knew that's gonna pop up. Oh man, this research was killer, man. I'll explain later on. And uh-huh. the only person I can think of that I could only compliment this awesome episode with is a man who you may know as Apollo Z Hack. Who the know. hell is Apollo Z Hack? <laughs> He's a hack. He's just a lame... lame oh, wait a minute. Was, was he that asshole that was on Channel Awesome for, like, a day? Yeah, something like that. It's <laughs> It was weird. It was a weird time. I remember that point in time. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah, he, <laughs> had, this, he had this really awesome review of her saga going, and then it just sort of disappeared. Just, just, like... just, just disappeared on the face of the earth, oh, but... <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry. I derailed that. Anyways, keep going. Keep going with your introduction. I'm just, I'm just rolling with the fires here. I'm just... Not even, I don't have a script. I'm just... <laughs> Spitballing, spitballing ideas here. Um, but yeah, Matt Burkett is here oh, with once us. Always a hack, always a hack. Hello, thank you very much for having me. No, mm-hmm. thank you for coming on because uh, you're the kaiju expert. Because you have a channel I... dedicated to kaiju called uh, Monstrosities, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Monstrosities, a vlog of Tokusatsu. We cover, you know, Kamen Rider, Sentai, all the Tokusatsu stuff, kaiju stuff. It's fun. It's really fun. You gotta check it out, man. If you uh, really want to check his stuff out, I'll plug, plug, plug. Uh, go to youtube.com slash thirdactfilms is the link. That $45 I told you I would give you is going to be in your PayPal later tonight, so thanks for the plug. <laughs> thanks. I'll just I'll look for that. <laughs> oh, wow. Are we on Patreon now and I didn't know? Wow, we're not on Patreon. <laughs> Shh. This is a non-profit podcast. Shh. Um... Anyways, yes, uh, it's with dinosaurs, giant monsters. Let's just talk about uh, a giant flying turtle named Gamera. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> just in time for the 50th anniversary, too, this that, year. That, too, and I was thinking about that. I was like, God damn, 1965, 50 years, man. God damn, Gamera, man. Because if you are new to the podcast, we did talk about giant monster films last year in honor of Godzilla coming out last year. We all saw Godzilla together, and it was pretty cool. It was a good time. Two-part still episode. Best, uh, still best movie-going experience I had last year, hands down. Oh, are you kidding me? It was a great movie experience. Hands down. So, uh, of course... I'm going to go ahead and rent it again this, this week. I'm going to sit down and watch it with my dad and just pop a bunch of popcorn and be yeah, right here. That's all you need, man, for Godzilla, man. That's all you need. Um, so go on. With Gamera, because James here has no had no clue about Gamera, right? Mm-hmm. Or some clue. Because I introduced James to Gamera, because James and I were actually watching Gamera films this, throughout this whole week to prep to prepare for this episode. 
I mean, we started on June 4th and watched Thursday, Friday, skipped the day, and then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we watched a Gamera movie every night. It was intense. And you guys watch a lot of kaiju. It was intense. We had to be prepared for the discussion because we would have been lost in the dark. <laughs> And I'm still kind of lost, but... Uh... We'll, 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 we'll talk about that, because... I mean, I got introduced to Gamera through Mystery Science Theater, pretty much, when they did five out of the eight original films. And we did watch those as as, uh, as research, instead of the original film. We actually watched one of the original uh, Japanese cut of the Showa era, which was Gamera vs. Jiger, which... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That was an experience, oh my god. Oh dear. We, uh, you we know, were wondering was... why they did not do a Mystery Science Theater episode of that one, because there was so much more easier to work with. I mean... The show era Gamera films are, are just, unfortunately, just plagued with really bad stuff. Like, there's some really imaginative things that they have to offer, but ultimately, you know, it really wasn't until the 90s until Gamera was actually taking even somewhat seriously thank yeah. you those, those, those original <laughs> movies i mean they're tough to get through i personally i really enjoy them on certain levels but they're they're difficult to get through but there's one or two that i think are just so absurd that they're just awesome like gamma versus Giron, like that yeah like, that one that that kind of <laughs> I, it, it, well the whole thing is is i i can understand this being a guilty pleasure for, for somebody, but I, I have to, to come out and say the the whole thing seems to be pretty flawed from the get-go. Um, with with the, um, the first Gamera film, we know what it we know what it is. It's a uh, it's it's essentially a Godzilla knockoff with a with a, a different type of monster. You know, that, uh, and from the get-go, also, they it appears that they wanted something there to be a lot more family-friendly. So, how do you balance that out in a monster movie? Well, um, you have a story where he Gamera's, Gamera's popped up and he's apparently evil and he's destroying everything and he's a menace to society, but he loves little boys. But, so how do you destroy him? Well, you don't destroy him. You, you respect the wishes of the, of the sweet little boy. And you don't, you don't blow him up or anything. You, uh, you, you encase him in a giant golf ball and shoot him out into outer space. That's what I, mean, I would do if there was a giant turtle running him up. That, that's clever. I mean, you shoot him into space, but... Oh no, he's got jet propulsion coming out of his back legs. He can fly. <laughs> and now I mean, we're, we're talking about we're we're talking about uh, Giant Monster Gamma, right? The the very first black and white movie. Yes, the first one yes. fifty years ago. Yes, the first one in the franchise. Do you, do you guys know why that movie even came about? Like, hmm. did you find that in your research? Not really. I didn't dig that far. Um. Well, it, it's just it's kind of a funny story, but like Dae, the the film company that uh, did all the Gamera movies, um, they were busy working on this movie called The Giant Rat Swarm, which is pretty self-explanatory. It had a, it was about giant rats attacking cities, right? And they had the great notion of using live rodents on set, rodents that had mites and ticks and parasites and basically caused an outbreak on set. Uh, everything had to be shut down. So, uh, because of this infestation of rodents, so they had all these miniature sets, and, you know, cities built and all this stuff, and they're like, oh shit, what are we going to do with this? And some guy's like, well, hey, I got this script I'm making called uh, Giant Fire-Eating Turtle Attacks Tokyo. And they're like, well, hell, let's do it, and then later turn it to Gamera. Well, they should have kept that as the title. That would have yeah, been great. Right? <laughs> oh my god. That's... Now you know. The more you know. <sighs> but yeah, so, no, you don't need... or, go ahead, sorry. So, so, so yeah, I think uh, going going back to the inevitable Godzilla comparison, what what makes Godzilla work was that they were they they weren't trying to be ridiculous. At least with the first film, 
they it um, you can look at it and see that there's a lot of model shots and some stuff that doesn't quite hold up, whatever. But you can still respect it for what it's worth. Mm-hmm. They 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 have their message. They they know what they're doing with it, um, and they they figure out a way to destroy the monster, which um, is it it's that's the the most rational thing to do i think is to destroy the monster but maybe with gamera they were trying to do something different and they they totally were actually um because they didn't want to be just like godzilla you know there there are different things throughout the series that they tried to do differently and you also have to keep in mind that around this time you know when gamera came out it was 1965 which is right before Ultraman, the TV show, came out. When Ultraman came out on Japanese television, that changed everything. You know, uh, the movie started to decline in ticket sales, both Godzilla and Gamera, uh, from then on. And if even if you look at the old Godzilla series, you know, you look at how it started in 1954 and how it ends in 1975, and it goes from this super serious, you know, nuclear holocaust message-driven film to... Godzilla tag-teaming with a Jack Nicholson uh, robot fighting a giant cockroach from an underground society with a giant space chicken as a tag-team partner, you know? But, like, kids, children were the prime market for this stuff. And uh, there was even some word that, like, you know, Godzilla started going the more kiddie route, like, towards the end of the 60s and the early 70s because of the Gamera franchise. But Dai A, you know, they were doing that on purpose because they knew that there was some kind of... Uh, you know, market there. That's why they were including white kids, you know, in like uh, Gamera versus Virus and, and onwards, because they thought that would appeal to a foreign market. Yeah. So, that. whether whether or not it worked, I mean, you, you that's I mean, obviously arguable. But the thought process was, you know, I mean, you got to make these things as kiddie as possible. And even the director, you know, of, of the Gamera trilogy was like, he, he didn't even like the original movies because he thought they were way too childish, you know, which they are. You know, they're ridiculous. Thank so, you. So ridiculous. Beyond ridiculous. So cheesy. And I love cheesy films. Because I'm from Wisconsin. So I love my cheese. Uh, God damn. I mean, the second film. Gamera versus Barogon. What the heck was happening there? Uh, I, I had... I, I couldn't even follow... I mean, of course we were watching Mystery Science Theater riff on it. But I was like, what the fuck's going on? Who's Baragon? Why is it Rainbow shooting out of his back? <laughs> the thing with uh, the thing with Barugan, um, you know, the very first Gamera movie, uh, Daie had two classes of budgets. You know, you had a uh, the Class A films that typically got you know all this money, and then the Class B films that got only you know half of that, a quarter of that, whatever. The original Gamera was considered a Class B film, but because it was such a hit, Barugan got a Class A um, budget. And so that's why it, it, it kind of went in this direction of, you know, there's like this, you know, jewel heist thing going on, you know, and, or something like that. It's been a while since I've seen it, to be perfectly honest. And there's no kids in it, you know. It's, no, it's all there about isn't. This, this human subplot. And that movie was not very successful. So they decided to go ahead and kind of go more of the kiddie route for the next movie. And the next movie also had a reduced budget. Like every pre, you know, following movie had like a budget of nothing really see that in the production and where the hell else are you going to see a dinosaur that shoots death rainbows out of its back has a chameleon tongue that also shoots like you know ice vapor out of it i mean come on that is about as imaginative as that hell. is that, that is it's like so it's like they got high and it's like okay barrel gone there's rainbow on the back ice tongue perfect and shoot it and the the mystery science theater crew once they saw the rainbow they they said what everyone was thinking. That I forget the line exactly, but I forgot the line you're talking. About. I forgot. I forgot the line exactly, but uh, insert your own Care Bear reference here. So <laughs> you know, I, I I know it might be really hard to to kind of see it, but honestly, even with the first one and the second one, you know, Die A, the the studio that produced this really had no experience in producing special effect films up to that point. And seriously, the director would spend 
like days and weeks at the studio just trying to master the craft of doing this stuff. And, uh, you know, at one point, the gamma suit actually blew up on the first movie because they had the pyro the gasoline within the suit that, uh, you know, shoots the fire. And the freaking thing exploded. Fortunately, no one was hurt, but it took like a week to repair. Um, like, th th it's just, it's no easy feat filming this shit, especially in those days because. Oh, yeah. You know, um, the suits, like in, in Barugan, when they're, they're fighting in the water, they had to, the Barugan suit was like styrofoam or something, or, or something of lightweight. It would float. So they had to cut off the tail and cut off all the limbs. So eventually, you know, it's just this kind of head with a torso that the, you know, Ooh. actor in, in the gamma suit's wrestling with just so it would stay afloat. Or not. Yeah. Uh, it must have been some good camera work because we didn't notice that. Oh, yeah, they had to make their editing choices and camera work make it perfect. Well, what did you guys think of Gamera vs. Gauss? That is, like, my favorite film in the Showa era. Would you like Gauss to awesome. Would you like to tell us all how you, how you pronounce Gauss. the name Gauss? Gauss. Gauss? I don't know. Before, before you were getting corrected. What, what did I say before? <laughs> Gaius? Oh, Gaos. That's right, Gaos. That's like Gaos. Because I don't know Japanese. It's not even Japanese. It's just a weird Gaos. Because the, the Y threw me off. <laughs> Whether or not they choose to have a Y. Yeah, because the cut, some cuts are, took the Y out of it, which is weird. It's weird. But yeah, it, I, it, it, it became. It looks like Gaos. Something like that. Stick in there. Gaos. 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 I don't, I don't know for certain, but I think it, you know, the Y became official, like, more so when Guardian of the Universe came out, yes. and uh, that, you know, Gauss was much more prominent then, because I, I, I've seen the, you know, just the G-A-O-S, you know, spelling of it, but I'm not exactly quite certain. No. I, it could have also been a bad, you know, translation originally from the, you know, Japanese I think that was like name. a Sandy Frank cut, I believe, that was with the, well, without the Y, so... I guess Sandy, Sandy, Frank, Sandy Frank's Sandy like, Frank. ah, let's just take the Y out of there and make it gay. Gaos would be good enough. Gauss is a hell of a monster, though. Like, it I, is. I love the sonic beams and yes. the, the flat head. And... I love it. I When they the lasers splice everything in half, it's just perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and you can tell the prop department really liked it, too, because they recycled the same... Uh, that that same suit in another film, I think. Yes. Yeah, gear on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. two movies later. It's, yeah, they just painted it differently. Yeah, they painted it silver, which I told James that because I knew that from the get go. I was like, yeah, they painted it. It well, it it's not hard to tell. No, because the same design as Gaos. There he goes it's again. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> See, now, when, what you told me and what I said wrong is going to be stuck in my head for the rest of the day. God damn you, James. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's the most popular monster in the franchise because they brought it back for the 90s trilogy, which is something you don't... I mean, with Godzilla, they had to bring popular characters for all the films, but with Gamera, you don't see a lot of recurring monsters except for this one. Yeah, Gauss has appeared in, uh, I want to say five movies out of the entire series um obviously versus gauss Giron, guardian of the universe um gamma three and then gamma the brave for like uh, two oh, seconds oh right yeah 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 i'd like but, to I, I i have this this one itching question when it comes to the original gamma films how do kids figure out how to pilot an alien spaceship <laughs> Well, you know, like, that that's something that uh, um, even, like, during the 90s, uh, the screenwriter, I, I forget, I know his last name's Ito, but, like, uh, he hated that about the original movies, how, you know, all the adults were dumb and the kids were just super smart and stuff. But again, it, it just it targets that audience, you know? Exactly. Um, and mm -hmm. it, it's... I, I think, you know, the original movies are definitely a good starter for people, um, or I should say you know, people who might have kids and want to introduce, you know, the that kind of genre to them. 
because you know some of the Godzilla stuff it, it gets it gets a little boring at times. You know, I mean, I would I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this, but I mean, I would rather much watch Godzilla uh, Gamera versus Giron than watch um, I don't know what am I thinking of like uh, Godzilla Raids Again or something like that. You know, the second Godzilla movie. Uh, it's just oh. uh, they're they're more entertaining. Oh. You know? Oh, way okay. more yeah, I mean, Gamera is way more entertaining. I mean, that's why I love Gamera a little bit more than Godzilla, to be honest. I mean, even though Godzilla has his moments, but Gamera, I mean, he's a fucking flying turtle. <laughs> you can't, Godzilla, you can't beat that. You sure you got atomic breath, so what? I mean, Gamera can <laughs> breathe fire, he can do a nice acrobatic kind of pull. Oh, that that has not aged well. We know this. <laughs> no kidding. Oh, none, none of those movies have aged well whatsoever. No, no, no. Um, I mean, I'm I'm just looking at that that one part where he's flipping around the pole there, and I'm just like, okay, and cut, and cut, and cut. Keep going and going, going, and it makes a perfect line. <laughs> uh, I I would have lost. I would have lost my my uh, train of thought watching that as a kid, so I don't know what the appeal is. There's there, you know, kaiju fans are a strange bunch, but I think you you really have to have some kind of nostalgia for these movies because you know if you were getting into it like now, um, it would really I don't know. I don't think you could really kind of force yourself to like these movies unless you watch them as a kid, you know? And, I mean, I can't even say that they're necessarily good movies, you know? I, I no, don't really no. necessarily think that there's anything, you know, the, the original Godzilla probably comes close uh, enough to be said, you know, it's a really good movie movie, you know? It's not just, you know, a piece of entertainment, you know? There's actually substance to the original Godzilla. There's no substance to the Gamma movies, um, mm -hmm. at least at least the originals. At all, right? Um, they're just kind of pulpy, stupid, fun, you know, movies. But at the same time, I mean, you look at the movies that we have today. I mean, Jesus Christ, Jurassic World. I mean, that that's kind of the same thing. You know, it's just a bunch of action scenes strung together with a really kind of bare bones story, but it caters to the lowest common denominator, and it's just dumb fun. You know, yeah, dumb that's... fun is what Hollywood is all about today. Exactly, exactly. Dumb fun is in. People love dumb fun. Dumb fun, dumb. Say that about ten times. Did you guys uh, watch uh, uh, Gamma vs. Virus? No, we skipped that one. We. God, how, how can you skip Virus? <laughs> I, it's I, 19 I, minutes of stock footage from Bar Barugan. I, that's exactly. I was like, because I. Why do we want to watch more of Barugan? <laughs> <laughs> we, we actually uh, uh, watched a recap review by James Rolfe, who did all the reviews of Gamera. So yeah. we watched that as a recap. So it was like, oh, okay, good. We skipped that and go straight to Giron. <laughs> yeah, James Rolfe was my, I, I should say, was my official introduction to the idea of Gamera but because, right, because yeah, yeah. I did see those reviews. I did yeah. see that top ten monster movies. Yeah, that one too. Yeah, top ten giant monsters. And Gamera was like... Years ago... Yeah, I remember that too. I actually did watch all those for research as well. It made me, uh, it made me interested in watching, um, uh, that, uh, that one Swedish one that I, no, no, Reptilicus. Reptilicus. Yeah, reti yep. Switzerland. Yes. God, that's an awful movie. <laughs> it it is so beautifully awful though. <laughs> so bad, it's good. God damn the, God. the green slime entered inserted in post in the in the foreign edits. What were they mm -hmm. thinking? Speaking of green slime, it's the blood of Gamera. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I, that's what I reference it as because Gamera's blood is green. I was like, that's slime. Oh my God, it's slime. <laughs> Nickelodeon's using Gamera's blood. Mm-hmm. Um, what I yeah. say every time I every time Gamera bleeds, I'm just sort of thinking like he slimed me. <laughs> Gamera versus Giron so, just totally 
fucked with my mind is like they go into space like what dude then... it's it's just so wonderfully ridiculous i mean Giron, a giant butcher knife that is a living creature that shoots you know chinese stars out of his nose yes i mean come on Ninja and stars. his fight with space gauss is awesome that is probably my favorite fight in the original yeah. like run of the gamma movies yes just the, slice, just slice, the slice. pure freaking violence of it is so over the it top. is it is really violent for a kid's movie i mean he sliced and sliced it and diced and i'm like holy crap apparently the director got a lot of flack for that too i, I bet i bet because um, like on. you know that kind of violence doesn't exist in the godzilla movies um and it, it, there's you, the guy that did the you know like the first seven or first i'm sorry the first like 10 godzilla movies the eiji Tsuburaya guy who did the special effects right um supposedly was really like against the violence in the gamma movies which i don't know is weird but mm. it's it's just a, a rumored story well gee you're producing them so what's the deal yeah who cares <sighs> um but kieran just ah oh, that's clever but the one like i mentioned before the original japanese cut we had to watch that i showed james uh, was uh, Gamma vs. Jiger, which is... Holy crap. <laughs> Where do I start it's with that? Once in my life, and that was one time too many. Oh my god. The, 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 the effects... I mean, Jiger was okay, but the, the rear projection... Oh, yes. The constant rear projection, that, as James pointed out to me, I was like looking at it, I was like, what the heck is that? What is that going on in the background? What? 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 Yeah, he he thought it was blue screen or green screen at first. It was. I was. I was like. like I, was, I, was, I was like. No, that's lousy rear projection. That's. What I was it looking. Is. I was like, is, is, is that green screen for 1970? I mean, I would believe they would have something like that. And but I, I was like, oh, his rear projection. God damn! I didn't know they used that. <laughs> I mean, I've seen good rear projection, but this. Oh, oh, oh this. Again. What were they doing? What yeah, were they doing? Mind, running the dailies back there? The uh, it... budgets were just getting slashed and slashed and slashed. Uh, I, I, I can totally tell. It's like and uh, and honestly, by this time, like by the time Jiger came out, the studio was only a year away from declaring bankruptcy. Yeah. Like, just it, not okay. even, you know, a year later. That's when it happened. This is this is the type of movie where I I take a look at it and say. Are you sure this wasn't developed using Kevin Costner's recycled piss water? <laughs> From, we were referencing uh, Waterworld. Because mm -hmm. of the piss at the beginning. So I was like, because the color, yeah, it was like piss yellow. I was like, what the heck's going on here? It's not matching with the film, but like, mm -hmm. oh, what the fuck? But like, the budget, I can understand. I mean, they have to do with so little. <sighs> and... But let's not forget my favorite moment of all. Uh, uh, Jiger um, attacking the city. Oh. This was... <laughs> okay, I know what you're talking about, James. <laughs> okay, so... This this monster is not all that creative. But for starters, he's, he's on all fours. He just... He just looks like a, a dinosaur to me. Mm -hmm. um, so as he's going through the city, he's knocking over he's knocking over models and whatnot. And he comes up behind one model in one scene and he's going like this. He's <laughs> just humping just humping it. I'm just like, he's up in the building. <laughs> he's up in the building. How are they not thinking? How are they not seeing this when they were when they were shooting? <laughs> yeah. Was this part of their budget too? <laughs> okay, go go your your direction to the scene is go hump the building until it falls over. <laughs> With but the series, it just makes me laugh because it's just it's cheesy fun with the Showa era, and and I had to explain what what the eras were to James because he didn't know what Showa or Hensei was, and I did my research and it was the era during 
uh, Japan's history with the Emperor. So there was a yes. Showa that lasted years, and then after Showa left, it was Hensei. And actually, Hensei's currently until now, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, the Showa that? era, I think, ended in, like, sometime in the 80s, and then... It was, like, 89. It was, like, 89. Something like that, yeah. And then Hensei yeah. was, like, through the rest until now. Yeah, I was thinking, because that really doesn't... It, let's say if we followed that same rationale, it's like, okay, so this is the this is the Emperor of Japan at the time. Uh, so we're going to name the different era of Gamera movies after the who's Emperor of Japan. I think it's more of a fan term thing. I don't think the Japanese actually refer to it like that. I actually think they refer to, like, you know, Series 1, Series 2, that kind Probably. of thing. Probably. I, mean, I, think, it, I, think, it, I think it was, like, a fan thing. The the fan, I mean, fans of old Tokusatsu, you know, they'll, they'll refer to, like, the common writers of the Showa era as the Showa writers, and then the Heisei, you know, writers as the Heisei writers. And it's it's just easier, I guess, to, you know, to do it that way. And, yeah, but as a point of comparison, we you, uh, we folks in the Bond fandom, uh, we call that we call that the the Sean Connery Bond movie or the Roger Moore Bond movie, we don't give the president of the United States credit for <laughs> credit for making the movie. Right. It's just the, the era which the film takes place in. But I, that's the, I figure I just want to say, this is say the, that. We don't call the Daniel Craig era the, uh, the, the Bush Obama <laughs> Bond movies. Did you guys uh, get around to watching Ziggura? Yes, we. That was the last. That was the last Mystery Science Theater episode they'd done with the Gamma films, and we watched it. Mm-hmm. Oh God, Ziggura, Ziggura. I don't think Zigra, I remember. Ziggura, please. I, I, I'm just I, gonna say it. Actually, I don't actually remember it. I think I did a Sleeping Sullivan on it. Actually, <laughs> I don't remember. And I stayed awake throughout most of it. That was. That was the one where. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Now it's coming was... back to me. It took me a while. Yeah, it, was that? That's the one where the kids were in the submarine. Yeah, the submarine. Yep. Yeah, now I remember. It's coming back to me. Now it's a submarine that goes underwater. There's like a spaceship that was on the moon, and, and then remember. they went underwater. And there's a space one under the Lackey of Zigra, which is just a giant swordfish, I believe. It looked like a fish to me. It was like weird. Remember, kids, you can do anything. Pilot a spaceship, pilot a submarine. yellow submarine. Oh, boy. God. It just gets ridiculous after movie after movie. And I just remember something about Jiger. They, uh, at one point, uh, Jiger has a tail and he's got, like, this, this, um, fucking needle. And he mm-hmm. pokes Gamera to infect him. And he gets frozen for, like, a couple of seconds or so, like, forever, until the kids go inside a Gamera to get the virus, and it's just a baby Jiger inside of Gamera. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, of all the things that, of all the ridiculous things that, that Gamera, the original series, showed, that was actually, that was actually one of the better choices they made because I don't, I don't know I, I my deal with the previous films was just that I couldn't I had a hard time following what was going on and for this for that particular movie I could follow it yeah which is weird because like I said we watched like the Mystery Science Theater riff episodes on most of these actually and then j- Jiger was our first original Japanese cut, and I'm surprised he actually followed it because it was just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. We also got to keep in mind, you know, the Mystery Science Theater ones are cut up too. You know, um, if you guys had watched the original Japanese cuts of those movies, probably would have been easier to follow. Probably, um, but, probably. You know, there was uh, just, especially American versions, are notorious for just no. being really badly edited oh, when they're God, distributed, yeah. especially during that time. It's not like today. I mean, today you can get all these movies subtitled, uncut, and all this. I mean, even 15 years ago, that was, you know, premium. You'd have to buy bootlegs of that. Yeah. You know? We live oh, in an era right. where it's just, it's ridiculous. I was on Netflix last night. I can watch, uh, 
I can watch a Jet Li's The Enforcer in whatever language I want to with that with yeah. whatever sub subtitles, completely uncut. Yeah, so it's a good era to be in when it comes to these films. <sighs> and nowadays, when they're doing dubbing too, they they've got. It's not just a, a team of ten people, uh, ten or so voice actors improvising the dubs in a in some dark room somewhere. It's they they try to hire a full cast of voice actors, and they actually they actually have software to try and sync up the mouth uh, the the voice acting with the mouth movement. And they've got, and they've got, uh, they, they tell their screenwriters, they say, okay, you have to write dialogue that, that at least tries to match the mouth movement. True. I, I guess it makes sense, actually, but I was thinking, like, could just, I thought they were just translating whatever it was in the film and trying to match it up with their voices, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. there's another thing about Jagger that threw me off, because I, so like I said, I watched James Rolfe's reviews of all the films, and he, he, when he reviewed Jiger, he was like talking about this one scene where they're demonstrating how Gamera got infected with a stock footage of an elephant being infected with larva, and the trunk is all plumped up, they cut it open, and, and I'm surprised I actually showed that whole scene in, in that film. It was just like, whoa, 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 it's like, that's gross, man. Back off. Yeah, it was edited Spaghetti. out, I think, in the American release. I think. Oh man, I nope. almost threw up at that point. Ugh. It uh, it was in there. I was just watching that. And I was like, oh, it's spaghetti. <laughs> Ripping minds. Zigra, back to Zigra. Zigra. Oh my god, that 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 lackey, that's that hot Asian woman. <laughs> I mean, James was eyeing her up. X one. Kind of, sort of. Yeah. It was just. Out. At this point, I'm just like, all right, fuck it. I, I I give up. It's it's not the the best one in the series. And mind you, they're not the greatest fucking movies in the world. They're just cheesy popcorn flicks. And thank God we skipped Gamma Super Monster because that's pretty much a clip show itself with added footage apparently. Yeah. What? Uh, so. Like after Zigra, um, Daya declared, declared bankruptcy, and um, I, I guess the president and three executives were sued the following year because they were using company funds for like illegal political contributions and all this other stuff. Um, one of the Gamera films got nixed, uh, Gamera versus uh, Gera Shark, which was you guys would have loved that one. He would have taken on like this giant like cobra thing with babies. Um, then in '74, uh, Daya was bought up by. It's uh, Tokuma Shoten Publishing Company, and that's when you got Super Monster Gamma that came out, which, again, like you said, it's just all the previous movies, you know, all strung together with, uh, you know, a Japanese uh, female wrestler starring as a superhero woman, and, uh, you know, Gamera dies at the end when he commits Kamikaze into a, an Imperial Star Destroyer. It's, uh, it's a weird movie. It's, yeah, it's basically what it is. It was just like a mix between Star Wars and superheroes with um, a, with a highlight reel attached to super, it. Super, super effing cheap, and uh, it took them 15 years to get them on screen again, so... Yeah, yeah and, and it's probably the best of the best. I mean, if you want to watch a Gamera film, you got to go with the 90s Gamera trilogy, which uh, that, that was actually 20 years ago, actually. It's hard to believe. It's like, wow, that was like actually 20 years ago, which it was a good... It's actually kind of cool that they came back in 95, because that would have been the... What? The f 30th? 30th anniversary of Gamera. Yeah. So that, would, yeah. that was perfect timing. And Gamera, Guardian of the Universe... Oh my lord, I just jizz, jizzed my pants. You like that? <laughs> oh my god. This was... Uh, I mean, he was... He, he was looking at... He was... He was uh, pumping this up like it was the second coming of Christ when he sent it to me. But hell yeah, I was, I was like, uh, I was, 
I, I sat down watching watching that was just like, well, okay. Shit definitely gets real. <laughs> exactly. I swear by that movie, dude. That is my favorite kaiju movie of all time. Thank I think, you. I, I Thank think you. It, it's arguably possibly the best kaiju movie ever made. I it mean, is. It's, it's it's an arguable point, but I, I stand by that statement. It, 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 and it, it, it kind of explains the origins of Gamera and Gauss. Yeah. It was perfect because you never knew the origins of these monsters in the Showa era. You just like, oh, they just show up. I don't know where. And it's perfect. Like, they ex- explain so much. And fun little fact for you if you're going to watch these 90s films, Steven Seagal's daughter is in these films. Yeah. Which I thought was, whoa, okay, star power, I guess. Well, you know what's really interesting? I don't know. Are you guys like anime buffs at all? I like, uh. Yeah, there's. I like. I like, uh, Tezuka myself. I I was just gonna say, like, the guy who did the special effects for the 90s movies, uh, Shinji. uh, Shinji Higuchi, he's doing the live action, uh, Attack on Titan movie. He's also. He's also co directing the new Godzilla movie that's coming out next year. Oh, shit. Um, The guy who wrote the Gamera movies, uh, Kazunori Ito wrote all of the dot hack movies and oh, he also shit. wrote the screenplay for ghost in the shell oh, and shit. then uh shisuke kaneko the director of of all three movies uh went on to do all two or the first two death note movies and then he did um godzilla mothra king adora giant monsters all out attack which was considered like one of the better godzilla movies of like the past 10 years or so yeah, okay. yes i was i was gonna mention that at some point because i was like oh you go from gamma to godzilla that's kind of like Wow. Yeah. You're like, graduating. Oh, you're graduating from Gamera to Godzilla. And dude, Guardian of the Universe had half the budget of the nineties Godzilla movies. Half the budget. And they were using CGI and all this stuff that the other Godzilla movies around that time were not even using. Um and the guys who who were all a part of it, like they didn't even really like the original Gamera movies, and I think that's really what kinda makes it Yeah. Fun, because it's accessible to anybody. You know, sure, it's it's still cheesy, and I don't think the effects necessarily hold up as well as they did 20 years ago. But um, you know, there's a lot to be said about that movie. It, it's it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, you don't have that. I I find this amazing. Um, you don't. They don't come out and and straight up say, now the camera is still the the friend of all children here in this series. Then. Because they're they're not necessarily going for the younger audiences, but it's sort of implied in a way that they're that they're still keeping that keeping that connection with the the younger audience by having that that girl in there that's that's connected with Gamera. Mm-hmm. I saw you. And yeah, they um uh, they they. They just treat it so much more like it's it's a uh, it's a disaster movie. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. It's like a mix between a monster movie and a disaster movie. Would you guys agree that you actually cared about, or at least had more connection with the char- the human characters in this movie, than like the Showa Gamera films? Maybe. Yeah. Well, maybe I found them at least more interesting. Maybe yeah, I... that's that's I, that's kind of what I meant. Yeah, because I'm not necessarily going to relate to these people. No, because I've never lived through a giant monster attack. Although <laughs> exactly, <laughs> I mean, the, I mean they, you never know, James. I mean, the monster could come through California and be like, ah. Oh my God, there he is, right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, with the Showa era, the human subplots were just monotonous they were like okay come on give me the monster show me the monster fights show me the monster fights with the hensei era they just like made these characters interesting so you can kind of relate yet you can just like you can root for them trying to do whatever they need to do in the film which that's what i watched and followed through at least definitely did you uh or sorry go ahead and you can, as for what you're saying with the with the visual effects, um, one thing that I like about 
one thing I like about um, about here with the '90s Gamera films was. I I know they were using real fire with the with the original Gamera series, um, but there's there's something that you have to there's there's always one thing that you have to take into account when doing monster movies, and I think this is why the original Godzilla holds up as well. I keep going back to that. Um, it, here's something that's important: scale. Uh, so with the with the flamethrowers, I it, um, it 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 didn't work necessarily because it didn't it didn't look like it was a gigantic fiery explosion coming right. out of the mouth and. Uh, that's because it, well, obviously it wasn't. But you look at the 90s Gamera, and every time he breathes fire, it's it's an event. That's a that's a freaking fireball, man. I mean, exactly. you wanna you wanna whip out the marshmallows here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come roast some marshmallows with that fire. Oh my god, it was so glorious. Uh, Did you guys uh, like uh, Gamera too? <laughs> Gamera two, we we actually got a we we actually got some pretty good scares out of that. Yeah, Attack on Attack of Legion was just interesting because I was wondering, okay, they brought Gauss back. What are they gonna do next? What bring another one back or what create a new one? Attack on of Legion just like it was like a horror film. It you never knew what Legion was until it made its creepy appearance in that subway scene. It just, I was like, I had a jump scare. I was like, oh, shit! Really? It's, mm -hmm. It was for me. It was just, it was it had that creepy vibe to it when the Legion came about. It, Gamera 2 is an interesting one. It's not as great as the first one. I mean, a Legion, a Legion, Legion is creative, I mind you. I mean, Alien Invasion... Bugs, Legion. I thought it was creative, but it just I never felt the impact from the first film. But Gamera 2 did something and it was good for what I mm -hmm. thought. Okay. Legion's a pretty freaking cool monster. Oh yeah, yeah I they, mean when they when they first do that reveal there, what I think what makes it what makes it frightening is that it's it, it's not a it's not a creature design that um, that that you would expect, I guess. It's not it's nothing human that first shows up, or or nothing even animal. No, it, it just it's... sort of likes this. It looked sort of like this this shaft with an eye in the middle. Yeah, like, it just it just came comes out of nowhere. It's an alien design. It just it, you never see aliens like that. It's just like a boop, eyeball. It's just like what the, the fuck, fuck is that? Is that? <laughs> um, a buddy of mine here in town actually has one of the props that they used in Gamera 2. Do you remember when all the little legions climb on Gamera? Yeah. Yeah, he has one of those little legions. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Like the real ones, not the not the CGI ones? Yeah, the real ones, the real models. Oh, man. But I thought it was kind of creative to crawl up on Gamera and just like... In Gamera's like, what the fuck is going on? I try to yeah. like try to get him off their back, and it's just like that was kind of cool how they did that. You know, since you guys are fans of Mystery Science Theater, um, when ADV released Gamera 2 on DVD years ago, they did a dub called Lake Texarkana Gamera. Did you ever hear about this? No. No. They redubbed the entire movie with redneck accents. And they, they they redid the soundtrack, and they they you know did different lines and all this stuff. And I just got to tell you, man, if you can find it on YouTube, I know that much. But the scene where Gamera is attacked by all the little legions has the best fucking music ever, because it's like this little hoedown music, and it's just like down da down da down da down da, and all these little legion drones crawl up and, and attack and. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll send you guys a link actually after the podcast because it, it it had me giggling like a little girl the first time I saw it it was amazing sweet 
Oh my god. I just think, I just think you guys would get a real kick out of it. I think I would. I mean, uh, I live in redneck country for crying out loud. I would know the rednecks. <laughs> I can't really imagine that so well in my head. Sorry, I'm laughing too hard. Oh no, you you guys are good. You know, actually, hold on. I have it up on YouTube right now. I want to see if I can. I'm gonna just cue it up. Okay. Exclusive. Watch it from. Damn it! Hold on one sec. Share. Start at okay. You have to start at this point. Mm-hmm. It should automatically. Uh, here we go. You got the technicals handled here. I think I can pull Our... it up on my end, so it'd be good. Hold on. Let me let me do that one more time. That's mm -hmm. the one. Uh, and... Okay. There. You sent that to me, which is fine. Yep. Which is, which is fine. I'll copy and paste. Oh, sorry. It's okie dokie. Okay, paused at 34.55. I got it. On the dot. Give me a sec here, I'll pull it up in. Cinema Royale is exclusive. Mm hmm. Let me resize this for our watchers at home. Whoa, stop. Okay. Shrink it. I need to have to jiggy rig this ever so slightly. Ah, let's see if I can do this right. We rarely show clips, but that's okay. Sorry about that. It's it's actually something different for the audience, which is awesome. We at Sim Royal we try different things wherever we can. Okie dokie, it's up and it's loaded. Sort of. Okay, so. We can sync it up exactly so we can watch all at the same time, so. Sweet. In. Three, two, one. Play. Has suspended all launches. There is no music in this sequence. And it, it exactly, just it totally yes. changes those... the mood. <laughs> yes! <laughs> exactly, for those watching at home. The group of has no music whatsoever, which kind of impacts the scene, actually. It's just, it's just out there. That was hilarious. The whole thing is worth the watch, like, it's... Yes. The, the redubbing of it's I, just fantastic. I will provide a link in the description below so you guys at home can actually click on and watch it full length. <laughs> God. And that's the thing. We, uh... With, with, with our research, we, uh... We were gonna go try to watch Gamera 3 or G3. And, uh... <laughs> I mean, James saw... Most of you before doing a sleep and solvent. I didn't have the chance to see it, which sucks, because I missed a big opportunity to watch G3 before this. Gamma 3 is probably the second best one out of the trilogy. I don't think it's as good as Gamma 1, but as in terms of visual effects, it blows G1 out of the water. Um, it, it, the yeah. if, if anything, man, the, the fight in Shibuya between Gauss and Gamma, as well as the fight in... Uh, I want to say it's Kyoto with Iris and uh, Gamera at the very end. 
totally just worth it. At the time, probably the best visual effects you know ever in a kaiju movie. Um, I think they probably look probably look pretty dated now since it's like at least 15 years old, if not a little older. But uh, 16. Uh, definitely, definitely an interesting movie. Takes the, the series in a direction that Gamera had never touched before. Very mature. It, because I, I will say that I actually tried to watch the beginning of it, and all I saw was the equator, and the dead Gauss. Mm-hmm. That's it. And I was like, wait a minute, the Gauss are back. Mm-hmm. Uh, it kind of reminds me I'm going to go back to another franchise completely unrelated to this but I'm thinking kind of like Die Hard like the first one Die Hard was good second one not so much third one great so I was thinking like Camera 3 could be the Die Hard with a Vengeance of the franchise <laughs> in a way <laughs> excuse the analogy but that's what I thought when I was like looking at it I was like holy shit that's a dick gals holy fuck Shit, guy just got serious. It's cool, man. It's a, uh, it, it's it's pretty fucking plot heavy. Like that, that's a real given. It, it most people probably think it's the most boring of the three, but it best visuals, best camera design, um, the just what they did with it. There, there was no kaiju movie like it uh, before or since then. Just in terms of, you know, Japanese made stuff. Um, Iris is an awesome looking monster. Um, but uh, highly recommend it for you guys. Yes, you will. Yes, Gamera will pay for killing my cat. <laughs> yeah. Enter, folks. Enter, folks. Which is, like, I know the basic plot of it. I was like, wait, revenge. It's like, wait, what? That, so what if Gamera killed your parents and a cat? It's a giant fucking monster. You want revenge over the guy? You're like a puny fucking human oh oh iris holy shit okay fine i can understand yeah i can understand the revenge motivation on that and that uh, aspect but it uh we get the implication that it was an accident though she doesn't see it that it's an accident though you know exactly, she sees it yeah. as you know a direct attack um and gamera is an evil creature actually um mm-hmm. And that's what's kind of cool about yeah. her relationship with Iris, uh, is just the fact that it's like this weird, perverse reversal of, like, Gamera's relationship with Asagi, you know, that human connection. And, uh, I don't know, just just interesting. I, I, th- I think they did a lot of interesting thing with the human characters, too, which, again, is something that you don't really see in giant monster movies. Most of the time, it's no, just like, you don't, cause... let's just, you know, see the monsters and be done with it. Exactly, yeah, because most monster movies, you just be like, get to the monsters already, we want to see the monsters fight. Human characters, we don't fucking yeah. care. But see, that's, it, it's, yeah, that's, a good monster movie will have the monster fights and, you know, great character development and characters in general you, have, you want to root for. Which is rare to see these days. With, I, 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 I gotta have to do this, because it's, because Gamera is basically a blatant, you know, cash in cow ripoff of Godzilla. Pretty much. And you gotta compare Godzilla to camera, Gamera, so... Screw Attack did a death battle of Godzilla versus Gamera, fan battle. Not, I mean, it's not official, but... They did all... They just did all their fucking research, put into this fight, and... Spoiler alert, Godzilla kicks uh, Gamera's you know, ass, which... Their, their research kind of sucked on that. <laughs> I... I, I I mean, I was looking, I was like, okay, that's, it was good, but, eh, well, I mean, it was good information. It's like, you know, I mean, who wins in a fight, you know, the Easter Bunny or the fucking Tooth Fairy? It's, you know, these two fantasy creatures. The, it, it was cool, I mean, it was, it was fun to kind of see those characters go at it, but like, you know, they, they're researching, and everyone backs up this research like it's some kind of, you know, God, um, set in stone fact. <laughs> but, yeah, they exactly. They list camera at like 30,000 tons or some bullshit, um, and I'm not to be all nerdy and like, well, you got it wrong, but they totally got it wrong. They they pulled that number from some uh, Wikipedia fan source, I think, like Godzilla Wikia or something. Um, something I, I think like that, the max yeah. that Gamera has ever weighed literally has been 80 tons, literally. And that comes that you know that comes from the back of action figure tags and stuff like that. Like you know they'll have the height descriptions and stuff, but he's never weighed 30,000 tons. He's always been you know about 50 meters shorter than Godzilla ever was. It, it Actually, was fun, my but... money's on the Easter Bunny in that fight. Yeah, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> there you go, just... 
Okay. Yeah, just I thought that, I thought it was interesting at least because I was just like, okay, okay, because because um after Gamera three there was a fan film known as Gamera four. Truth, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the truth, and Matt was telling me about this briefly, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> there was a fan film that only showed in Japan? How fucking rude! Come on, show us to us. At Apparently, least. it's been sporadically shown like at conventions here, like in the U.S., but. I no idea. It apparently is really good from what everybody says. It's, it's infamous. It's mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, I want to see it. Um, but then, um, there was another, because the new company that owns Gamera can't think of his name. Yeah, um, uh, uh, they, the, the president of Dai died, and then it was just sold to uh, Katakawa Publishing Company. Okay, yeah, yeah, because they... They proposed to Toho about doing Godzilla vs. Gamron, and from what I read was Toho said, uh, no thank you. Pretty much. But it was pretty much a nutshell, and, I mean, it... So we're gonna have to wait till Come. somebody dies so the, uh, so the rights get handed over? That's that kind of a or, shame. Or Gamera's gonna have to make a bajillion dollars because, you know, Gamera is, is writing off the coattails of Godzilla. Exactly. Toho, yeah, yeah. Toho would gain absolutely nothing by making that movie. As much as I would love to see that movie, you know, you got to think. You know, do you really think they would let Gamera win over Godzilla? Toho of all people. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I was just thinking, like, wait, if Godzilla versus King Kong happened, I mean, you somehow, you somehow he could do like a, some kind of thing like make it a big epic you know like or maybe i don't know or maybe it starts out as godzilla versus camera but then a third entity enters the ring and the godzilla and camera have to team up to fight that enemy M mega man shut up what, what and godzilla and camera have to team up to fight that enemy and it's, could work. it's oh uh, oh that could that could work yeah if it was like a team like they start fighting at first but then they're like oh there's other guys are anime we gotta team up and be like a friendship kind it's of thing it's a giant tom servo from space invading invading planet earth and we have to <laughs> we have to stop it. <laughs> it it would it would definitely or it's the be giant, interesting yeah. or it's the giant head from hong kong 97 there you go <laughs> Everything could be possible. I mean, from what? I mean, Godzilla's the Japanese Godzilla's gonna have a reboot next year, and Matt, you actually did a video covering the Gamera revival, all about that news that's coming out apparently next year as well. Actually, so. it was supposed to come out this year. Uh, it's really weird. It was announced in a book that came out early last year. And then they were like, mm -hmm. oh, hey, we're going to have all these uh, photos and pre-production art, and it was going to appear in some magazine last June. And then the magazine wasn't published, and that stuff never came out, and there has not been a word about it since. Really weird. No, yeah, because I was, I was looking for it. I was like, wait, that's all? Oh, they announced it, okay. But where's everything exactly. else? Yeah. I mean, it would have been perfect to time it for 50 years, but I guess next year kind of fucking... I I'm work. almost I mean, wondering if they're going to wait till the new Godzilla comes out to see how well it does. New one as in the Japanese Probably. one. Probably. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, dude, we totally skipped out on Gamera the Brave, which is very appropriate because you should skip out on Gamera the Brave. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, all, right. this, all this ratting on Gamera the Brave just sort of makes me curious now. I, uh, yeah, I mean, there had to be one era film in the new millennium 2006 which next year would be 10 years which wow 10 years um from what i hear i've not seen the film i've seen reviews and clips and whatever of it from what i hear spoilers if you haven't gamma dies like in the first 10 minutes or so and then it focuses on gamma's son named toto it, it, from a little turtle a, a, a average looking turtle Flying around, just <laughs> and grows up to be this giant, gamma looking turtle. I, mean, I, I don't know. It's just like Toto, fucking Toto. 
They, Why uh, is it called Gamera the Brave? It should have been Toto the Brave then if it was not focusing on Gamera because Gamera fucking dies. It's, uh, you know, dude, they even took away Gamera's roar. Like, he doesn't have his roar in that movie. They give him, like, this stock um, lion roar that you can hear, like, in the old Tarzan movies and crap. It's oh. ridiculous. Oh, my God. Um, oh, even the 90s gam- Gamera films had that, yeah. that homage to the original Gamera roar. Not to... Like, the, the visual effects are pretty cool. Like, I'm not going to lie there. And, like, I guess some of the ideas they try to tackle are, are kind of interesting. But overall, man, like, it just it doesn't doesn't ebb well and it did so badly that it, it just they never made another one you know that's why it's been Mm-mm. almost 10 years since that movie and nothing mm-hmm. with gamma has ever come out nope 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 i know shell factory has been released in gamma films both the japanese and the english dub version, uh, yeah, i great believe DVDs and which... Blu-rays. yeah i do not have the shell factory i actually got the mill Creek Collection, a Legacy Collection, sixty-five to ninety-nine, which is all love films, excluding Gamma the Brave, which are all original Japanese cut, which is cool, good quality. Uh, so if you want to check out Gamma, just pick up Shout Factor or even the Mill Creek Legacy Collection. Um, God, I wish there were special features though. God, I would love to hear like a commentary or behind-the-scenes stuff. It would have been awesome, even even for the '90s stuff. There's uh, on the Blu-rays they have uh, behind-the-scene featurettes and stuff. Oh fuck! Um, Always the Blu-rays. Yeah, exactly. Always the fucking Blu-rays. Why the? They... Minor sake, minor DVDs don't. They used to have special features. No, they don't. Which yeah. I hate. I love I love DVDs, and they don't fucking do that anymore. It's all the Blu-rays, and I'm just like. Fuck, 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 fuck. I want to but, squeeze that extra 15 yeah, bucks out of you. It's just like, do I really want to pick up the Blu-ray? Just for the... Fuck. Is the quality um, really but, good? It actually... It is it really, it is yeah. actually. The Gamma Trilogy on Blu-ray looks awesome. Really uh, fucking oh. good. Okay. Oh, hey, dude, I think mouth. you can pick up the Trilogy yeah. on Blu-ray for like 10 bucks. Like, it's not very much. Ooh. Ooh, there you go. There's your exclusive deal, people. I, I would totally recommend, like, the 90s Hensei era if you want a serious, badass camera, but if you're interested in going back to the original eight films, knock yourself out if you're, like, a hardcore fan like I am. Like, I'm all for cheesy, you know, films. And I just thought of Gamera because I was like, I knew about Gamera, and I was like, I gotta, I gotta talk about Gamera in an episode. Like, nobody else talks about Gamera. And it's just... We gotta bring awareness to Gamera to everybody, the new generation of people. It's worthwhile. Yeah. Great, great series. Um, 90s movies especially. Pinnacle of kaiju movies. Uh, I think very, very easily accessible to a lot of people who, you know, enjoy nerdy stuff, you know, and, and like the anime and, and all that fun stuff. It's, uh, it's just a really good time. So what do you think about the future of Gamera? Where would they go next for Gamera, besides the revival? There was theories going around that the new movie was actually going to be an anime. Some, I mean, there's a lot of fans that were kind of putting that forward because I guess the... Speculating. The, what, I, th- I don't know if it was the producer or the head of the company was saying that Gamera was going to appear in a surprising new form. Whatever that really means. I mean, that could be taken a bazillion different ways. But a lot of people were, like, thinking, man, wouldn't it be kind of cool if it was, like, an animated movie, like, you know, a la Attack on Titan or something like that. Um, That, I mean, that could be interesting to do like that. I mean, that'd be a, for anime fans, and then, you know, it's a, introduce a new generation of Gamera, you know, through a new medium, through animation, at least. I mean... Even George Miller was going to do some like, like a Mad Max animated fe- film before doing it live action Fury Road, so it could have been, could have been, I don't know, I just, and it, the camera needs to come back, I mean, Godzilla, I mean, Amer- maybe the, maybe Amer- the Americans, you know, should actually re- do like their own camera take on it, I guess, I don't know, I'm just spitballing, because. Gamera doesn't I mean, have much of an audience here. It's true. It's true, sadly. I do think that if they were going to remake it, they should just remake Gamera Guardian of the Universe. 
I mean, it's it's, it's been yes. 20 years, and I think that that story could be updated and modernized and still retain, like, you know, a decent amount of punch. And the same with this, it does kind of remind Same with the sequels, only we'll have to take out the Dreamcast and update it with an Xbox <laughs> or something. Right. PS4. <laughs> I love it. That made me laugh the most. It's like, oh, okay, Sega, you're putting your product in here, Dreamcast on a camera film. Well, that's why it was most uh, it was most popular in uh, in in Japan, but not in the U.S. or anywhere else. Oh yeah, yeah, that uh, that death battle between Chuck Norris and um. Says the guy who's got one of these underneath his TV. <laughs> Of course you got, of course you got Dreamcast. Oh man, is it bad that we have twenty minutes left? Um, well, it doesn't have to be a long one, does it? No, it doesn't. So, any final thoughts on Gamera? Uh, Gamera is really neat. He's full of turtle meat, and you should go buy his merch and watch his movies. We've been eating Gamera. <laughs> Turtle meat. I'll get you turtles. Meat turtle soup. Next time, <laughs> turtles. Next time. <laughs> Gamera was the original mutant turtle. Mm -hmm. Which, 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 with Gamera, I thought he was mutant. Like, but it, until Guardian of the Universe came out, it's like, oh, he was engineered. That's interesting. I mean, Atlantis. Yeah, he was uh, created just... to be a god. Something like that. I thought something like that. I was th I think the origin. I thought the origin was so interesting. That was, that was interesting. I, 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 uh, I was watching that, and they were mentioning things like Oricalcum, the metal, uh, the Atlantean metal of legend, and I was just like, oh, so these guys played Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis too. <laughs> Uh, oh, man. Good stuff. Mm hmm. Good. Highly recommended for those who are interested in giant monster films and kaiju and flying fucking turtles. <laughs> turtles rule. Who, who doesn't like flying Ga turtles? Who doesn't love. I mean, turtles are amazing. Turtle. There's so many. Turtle power. I like turtles. Hashtag turtle power. <laughs> Hashtag gamera. You can follow us on Twitter, by the way. You can you can follow James at at Hymatude, but he doesn't tweet that often. But if you want to follow him, go ahead. You could tweet Matt at at Apollo Z Hack, which I don't understand why you still have that name because Apollo Z Hack is dead. But I'm he lives address. in my heart. That's can... all that matters. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of course, of course. I mean, not a people are a lot of people. Not a lot of people are watching those reviews now since you re-uploaded them. Just break my heart even more, dude. I'll have to rewatch them I'm now, actually. Uh, I didn't. I, I might have to do that too, actually. I mean, go check out Matt's stuff, you know, youtube.com slash third act films, man. I mean, subscribe to this guy, because he's cool. Yeah, because I, I don't think. Yeah. It, it looks like here you. It looks like here you. You did finish the review of our saga. Maybe I just didn't. Watch um, them all. episode. Well, episode six came out. It was supposed to be seven episodes, but six was not supposed to be the last, but it. It was the last, and it kind of has a definitive ending. Not the ending that we had wanted, but yeah, that came out after we were gone from Channel Awesome. And, but probably, God, I want to say maybe like four or five months after the fact. So it just it went up on the Blip channel, and then it just recently just resurfaced again on, on YouTube. So. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, I might have to do that because, because honestly, I knew about Palsy Hack, but I never watched it. So maybe I'll just do it in honor of that. Oh, you don't have to watch it. Monstrosities is a lot better. Yeah, I was gonna say Monstrosity is a lot better. I mean, you don't cover a lot of Gamera. I mean, you only covered Gamera twice, I believe, on your channel. Uh, it's possible. Um, but it... I, because, because it's the the, to the 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 figure you talked about, Gamera. The, figure and then it was the revival you talked we about. Talk, we did an Iris episode as well, but I mean Gamera pops up in conversation. Like there's a couple of episodes where we show off like the, the Legion toy I told you about, or Legion prop rather. Okay. Um, but okay. uh it, it's not something that we've gone through extensively. 
though I would like that to change. I think that should change. Who knows? You maybe mention this and views up the wazoo. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Me and my, you know, forty-five hundred subscribers. <laughs> I will mention it. Though. I'll put it. Compa compared to my 404 <laughs> subscribers. <laughs> and compared to my 1,000 subscribers. <laughs> totally cult following. Um, <sighs> fuck, I, wanna, I was going to say something. God damn. I was going to end it, but I was, there was another thought in my head I was thinking of. God damn. I hate when those moments happen. I sneezed away your thoughts. Sneezed away the fuck was it? It was something about... Oh, I, I guess I haven't not seen all the monstrosity episodes, really. I just pop. There was one I've... There was one called Rainbow Man, wasn't there? <laughs> there was something you found at a... Yeah, the Japanese uh, record, and... yeah. yeah. Rainbow Man, I was like, oh my god, Rainbow Man. Yeah, Rainbow Man. Is... Oh, taste the rainbow. <laughs> I'm just totally geeking out now, just thinking about all this, um... <sighs> Gamera. Mm -hmm. Gamera. Gamera. Turtle power. Alright, bro. This has, been Cin this has been Cinema Royale. We've talked about these Gamera as much as we could. If you don't want to watch the original cut, try to watch the Mystery Science Theater episodes. I mean, James and I did. The, the jokes and riffs were funny. And the, the dubbing is somewhat questionable, but it's fun to actually see that compared to the original cut, I guess. Um, other than that, just go buy Gamera. Just support Gamera. Maybe he'll have a big comeback. Support Neo with... Gamera. <laughs> ne yes, Neo Gamera. Neo Gamera. 90s Gamera. I swear. I swear they. I I've been thinking about this. Like, like they should have like, like Mecha, camera. That would be pretty cool. Or, I was like, what? I, I don't know. It was like a hypothetical thing I was thinking of. Like, what if the two monsters in a parallel universe switched around? Like, if Gamera was the more popular one and Godzilla's like the ripoff. Could, could you imagine the matchups that Gamera would have had with the Godzilla universe? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mecha, Mecha, Gamera. Uh, space camera, fucking. Space camera. <laughs> Even it doesn't make any sense, but it's just like, oh, camera was in space. I mean, get like a evil twin. I don't know. Maybe camera should just take hints from, since it is like a ripoff, they could just take hints from the Godzilla franchise and be like, oh, hey, this new is surprising look. Oh. It's a robot. It's Mecha Gamera. Exactly. <laughs> That's the surprising twist. <laughs> yep. Fuck it. Just go watch Gamera. I might mixtape. This has been Cinema Royale. And for Gamera's sake, support Gamera. Hashtag Gamera. Ciao for now. Later.